Okay. So, hi. My name is Pedro. Uh, I'm a designer. During my free time, I enjoy to travel, to meet folks like you, um, but also uh, regarding design, art. Um, I also, uh, when I do have a little time, I um, conduct some kind of workshops um, regarding uh, UX design, but as well uh, graphic design at the um, beautiful city of Prague, Czech Republic. Um, I'm also a happy camper at Colabra, and today um, I intend you to show. I intend to show you how easy it can be uh, to customize Colabra online, um, you know, without uh, tricks and without coding and this type of thing. So uh, any designer uh, should be able to do it, or even any um, business owner, right? Um, so, uh, talking about uh, customization, um, there is uh, great uh, advantages uh, regarding customization. Not only because it allows you to um, customize, uh, customize it according to your needs or even your personal taste. It can be just that and that's fine. Um, so, uh, for that we will be probably working with XML, uh, CSS and SVG. Um, nothing too complex. <laughs> um, so uh, we can divide um, we can divide the, the, the theme in two pieces, if you will. Um, the widgets um, that uh, you know includes um, dialogue, sidebar, etc., and all the controls, and the overall theme. So basically, the rest, right? Tall bars, icons drop-down menus. Um, going through uh, widgets. So uh, widgets are uh, customizable. That's why I'm uh, talking and starting with them. They actually use this new uh, extended instance of native widget framework and I really recommend you um, to either after um, or when you have time uh, to watch the, the, the talk from Tomás where he talks a little bit about these intricacies um, of how this was implemented. Uh, but for now, um, let's just say that um, it draws the interface depending on a definition or to be honest, a set of definitions um, that are um, included in one file and we'll see that uh, later on. Um, it allows uh, multiple customizations, right? So multiple definitions, which in turn means multiple themes. Um, this is really cool. We can now have a theme depending on uh, an environment. Um, and big thanks for Athenis for this, yes. Um, now it's really cool that, you know, we open Colabra in, on an iPad and without doing nothing, it just knows that it's an iOS uh, um, device and it just serves you with the right theme um, with the iOS-like components. And we'll see this uh, later on. Uh, sorry for the bullets. I also don't like it that much, but we'll see more pictures. Um, let's let him take a peek. <laughs> Perfect. Um, you know, and this in return gives you the opportunity to, for instance, going from, for instance, the, uh, no, yes, uh, going from a purplish theme um, uh, where you see um, not only colors, but even components are uh, uh, from this uh, theme to something, uh, for instance, more bright, where the accent color is actually blue, and even the, the, the controls per se completely change, you see, here. This is great, and especially when you can uh, serve it uh, um, depending on the theme as we uh, discussed earlier. So you see the, the, the components change completely. Now, uh, I'm going to show you an example of how you do that, right, step by step. Um, so, imagine um, you want to tweak uh, a particular dialogue, a particular um, component of, of a dialogue. 
it couldn't be it couldn't be easier, right? So you go to your instd uh, directory uh, inside of your um, core, um, and here you will find in this subfolder online this XML file. Yeah, hey, it couldn't be more semantic, right? <laughs> a file that has a definition is called definition, um, and inside you will see a bunch of subtags. Now let's discuss one by one. Um, the style tag, um, in a simple way, it deals with colors, right? Um, highlight, uh, font colors. So uh, even without messing too much around, too many SVGs, etc., you can just tweak the overall uh, aesthetic just by changing um, those values. Next, we have settings. At set in settings, you can set um, values of things that are not particular, particularly um, from a specific control per se, but um, generally, for instance, margins, uh, tabs alignment, right? And we know that there is uh, some dialogues with, all, with quite uh, the number of tabs, so you can control that. Um, the default font size, etc. And now we reach to our first um, control. Let's simplify this. So we can divide this in three uh, parts. So first we need to say which type of control we are talking about, right? Here, let's, let's talk about our uh, little radio button. Then, um, you will uh, say, okay, this control will have uh, this size using the part tag, and inside of this part tag, you will have a bunch of states. Now, each of these state is actually not an individual state, but a, com a combination of states, right? So as you see here, um, I'm saying, hey, um, please define that uh, when, the, um, when the radio button is uh, enabled, not pressed and checked, use this SVG, right? And you see that all the other states are actually a combination of states, you see? Uh, this allows you to have many intermediary states, right? Not just the on, off, disable, enable, um, which is really awesome. <laughs> Uh, because uh, if you play your SVGs right, um, you can achieve uh, some inter interesting uh, aesthetic results. So, uh, for instance, here, when it goes, uh, basically you are talking about uh, when the radio uh, button is on and it's pressed, and we kind of, uh, I'm not sure if you see it with a video project, but we are already dimming out uh, our little inner circle. So it almost gives this, even though there is an animation, it gives the essence and gives this visual cue to, to the user. And that's cool. Um, now, yeah, we, here we have, uh, yes, it shouldn't be like this, yeah. Sorry for the rendering issue. Uh, maybe it's the resolution. Um, and exactly, we have many states, as we say, like, of course, uh, more than one state can be catch. Right? More than one state can be active. Um, but just the first one will be uh, understood and rendered. Um, yeah? That's why it's important for this order, the order you, you, you set your um, uh, states. But of course, you can always play with it. Right? You, can, you set some definitions, you play, you, you, you change some SVGs. Uh, it's quite easy. The SVGs, you'd, uh, it would be located um, in parallel with your XML file. So there is actually no structure folder complexity here. <laughs> um, now, that being said, it doesn't, it, it doesn't make much sense to customize your widgets and then forget the rest, right? <laughs> Everything should be uh, one identity, one visual identity. And I'm happy to say that it should be still you know, easy, easy to set up and easy to act, um, even if you are just play with it. So in here, uh, inside of your online directory, uh, inside of this subfolder, uh, you will find many CSS, many uh, JavaScript files. So 
uh, my, a word of advice would be uh, to don't try to uh, change or hack every single file because then you will have many uh, loose pieces, right? And harder for you even, even if it's just personally, even if you are just playing with it, it'll be harder for you to maintain and then you fix some CSS rule in one file and then you find out that in the other file is, yeah, so, and that's why you can just use this file, branding.css, and of course, if any uh, images are referenced there or you want to add any extra image, you can just uh, drop them here, right? Um, before the, all these, you need to get Collabra or, or, or development version of it, right? Uh, and be sure, this is quite important, that the code brand package uh, it's on your machine, right? Just to check. Um, and then, hopefully, you will see uh, what we see here, right? Now, uh, these are, this has a couple of advantages, right? Uh, you have just one place where your, uh, all these customizations go, one file, one folder, that's it. But what if, and we sometimes receive some, these emails, what if you uh, went really happy with your customizations and suddenly you want to have many variants of your own customizations. Suddenly you want to have your own personal set of customizations, your little themes, if you will. It will be a little bit troublesome to just, uh, you know, uh, have it like branding underscore copy one and then, you know, and then if you want to change, you need to rename. Um, so, uh, for it, um, you should just, we have here a potato, uh, and for, for, for this case, you should either, um, you know, uh, refrain to have these multiple files and just have this CSS file and everything is there. So, for instance, if you want to, um, if you want to change the, the currency symbol, Imagine uh, you have a specific requirement from your uh, customers or even at your home. Someone really likes potatoes, right? And for them, potatoes means currency. And that's how they see it. So you should be as easy as a potato to just replace the SVG with your SVG and making sure that this is over this folder. And then it should be, um, you know, Easy peasy, right? You will just re redraw and you will have a potato as your format a currency symbol. Um, so at the end, this gives you a great flexibility because it's really up to you. Uh, like it doesn't matter your method, it doesn't matter how, how, how you do it locally. At the end, you just need to be sure that you update that CSS, you drop it there, right? Um, it, that images are located here, and that's it, right? Um, now, could you improve this workflow? Um, and again, I reiterate, um, you are free the, you know, to choose whatever method you want. What you, uh, what you uh, might start to think is that, okay, wait, what if I divide the CSS file in multiple CSS files that have my own customizations and I can play with it? Like, I would, Again, uh, recommend to don't do that <laughs> because then it means that you will alter your uh, lowly flat directory so it will not be this pristine directory anymore. Suddenly you'll have many things happening there. Uh, so for instance, if there is an update or something, you will have again these loose pieces. Um, and then you might think, okay, uh, but I will, maybe I can change the classes in the HTML. No, don't do that. It will be really messy. <laughs> uh, so uh, maybe if you really want to have a, a, a more organized structure of your own locally. I mean, apart from Collabra, so you have your own things and then uh, wherever you want, you just want to, okay, now I want to have it from my own customizations and I want to drop it to Collabra and everything works. If you want that, maybe uh, we can talk about preprocessor, pre right? And this CSS preprocessor, it allows you um, to compile, I think, yes, it allows you to uh, compile from a, script, a scripting language to CSS. Um, and this, yes, adds a, a layer of complexity, but it also, and we will 
for this example, we'll take SES. Um, and there is, there is many, as you see, but we'll, for this example, we'll take SES. This, uh, this suddenly allows you to work with variables, functions, uh, what they call mixings. Um, uh, this translated means that uh, you can avoid repetition because you can have variables. And you can have, for instance, even the, in this example where we are talking about vendor-specific proprieties, for instance, when you want to transform an element in CSS or other example, and you need to use m more uh, these vendor-specific either for, for that browser or, or that browser, you can have this in one place and reuse the code, right? So you don't need to have this redundancy all over the place. Um, Yes, plus it will still allow you to debug direct, directly on a browser as you have been doing with CSS. You just need to be sure that you have the source maps on. Um, and source maps are nothing more than uh, little uh, files that tell the browser, hey, this CSS came from this uh, uh, scripting file that happens to be a SAS file. Um, and this even allows you to edit the, the, the SAS file directly. And you can then uh, use these links to just to be sure if they are enabled or set up correctly in your preferred uh, browser. Um, how you would go about to install it? Uh, there is many ways and using many different technologies. So it's, again, great level of flexibility. It's, uh, it's really up to you. Uh, and even all this we are discussing now, it's even not needed. It's, if you are uh, happy with just CSS, just, you know, uh, do your own customizations. The, just drop it in that directory we spoke about it. And that's it. You know, <laughs> no more work. Um, but if, if you want more, uh, com, uh, more, more level of uh, granular um, level of organization, you might want to install it over your preferred uh, implementation. Again, a word of advice. Uh, this is the primary implementation, which means that um, performance fixes and even new features always appear first on Dart. Uh, and then it's up to the communities on the other implementations if they appear or not, or even with some uh, small tweaks, different tweaks. Um, now, this is how you could structure it uh, you know, locally, right? So again, the big advantage is that it doesn't affect your lowly flat directory. So your online uh, uh, folder structure is still pristine. <laughs> you know, no, no, uh, no probability of problems there. Um, and here is how you could uh, uh, structure, right? So you could, for instance, uh, divide it in, in components. Your own, of course, here I went crazy. I ju I'm just to give an example that you can really go granular and you can really have a lot of custom uh, customizations as much as you want. And then you'll have, for instance, a base file where all your theme-specific variables uh, will be, right? And then this little guy, our, actually our main guy, uh, would uh, do the breach of all these files and say, uh, if there is a rule that comes from one of these files, uh, and uses a specific theme, the guy say, okay, give me this, 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 this color from this specific theme, and we'll probably read from this uh, variables file. And we'll see this in a minute, so, uh, so you don't need to worry. And finally to run would be, for instance, just one line, um, and there is uh, quite interesting uh, flags here. But the, the, the advantage here is that you can automate this process, right? You can run this in, in, on a terminal, and actually many um, editors even have some plugins that if you really don't want to even can avoid the terminal and run this uh, on the background. Uh, and it will be watching all, always your file. And you see, even, even your own customer, custom uh, structure um, is in your local folder it can automatically deploy to the directory we spoke about it. So at the end, it's doing the same, right? It's just uh, rewriting that file. And then there is cool things like you can choose a compressed style for a you know, um, smaller file, etc. Uh, but enough of bullets. <laughs> Let's see an example, <laughs> or second example, actually. So uh, you see here, uh, and I try to be a little bit brief and talk just a small detail because I think then it's clear to follow through. So 
you see, we have here, we are talking a bit about uh, drop down menus, uh, different accent colors. For instance, even here, um, we have uh, a normal font height. Suddenly, here, we have bold. Um, how you would go about um, if you want to have, for instance, different set of customizations? Easy. So, following that structure, we would just go to our toolbar app file. We would set normally as we would do, for instance, in CSS. But instead of keep keeping uh, hammy, uh, hammering down all the rules here, and probably if we want, if we have like two, three set of customization, we will have these times two times three. Who knows? So instead of these, we say, okay, no, no, just go and 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 ask this little fellow our base uh, file where we have all these theme-specific variables, etc., and get the values from there. On that side, this could be a, a, an implementation where we have just two set of, of, of rules, and said, okay, so if this variable is set to this, use this. If it's set to our your theme 2, which is an extremely semantic variable uh, value, uh, you'd use this. And suddenly you have these two different uh, set of customizations. And this is just one way to go about it. Of course, if you, if you read the previous uh, slide, there is, there is many methods you can uh, go about it, right? You can even have a uh, theme, uh, many themes for each specific uh, file, right? It's up to you. Again, a greater level of uh, flexibility. But just to make it simple, I use like this. I think it's easy to follow. Um, you know, and at the end, the goal here is to make it yours, right? Either for your own personal taste, or if you have a specific need, for instance, as, as we saw previously, if you want to have a currency uh, format icon that is not a coin, but it's a potato, no problem. You can just switch it and have it there. So it's really up to you. And this is just a couple of examples how, you know, the variety you can get from these simple steps. Um, Yes, thank you. I hope it was not too fast and not too slow. <laughs> yes, sir. and sorry for, I know you were waiting here a <laughs> long time, but I was waiting for everyone to calm down before starting. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> tell um, me, tell me. Wait, uh, it depends because I go back a little bit. <laughs> ah, ah. Okay. Uh, or. Yes, like if we are talking about widgets, it's different, right? Uh, because uh, as you notice, we are actually not using. Uh, CSS inside when we are defining these uh, objects, yeah. right? Yeah. So, uh, and I hope we have time. Uh, I skipped that because I, I thought we wouldn't have time for that. But for instance, um, uh, these, there is many of these components, they are SVGs, right? So for instance, when we go here to our definitions, you see they are SVGs, right? Now we have two types of SVGs. on. One side, we have the SVGs regarding the controls, right? And they, are they end up to be rendered as a bitmap. Then we have other SVGs, the SVGs that um, they are mutable. They are changing, right? For instance, an SVG, for instance, for our, um, I don't know, drop-down menu or, you know, they change um, width. So they are actually render rendered. Uh, via draw comments, right? So there is a difference there. But if you are talking about, <laughs> but if you are talking about the, the overall theme, so not the widgets per se, but the overall theme, uh, then uh, the, coo the the coolness of this is that you can have it. You can have online running. <laughs> you can you can even use the web tools <laughs> on a browser. <laughs> uh, go to that branding.css. 
change it, or even, I don't know, delete the whole thing and paste whatever you want, and you will see in real time uh, the changes appearing. Yeah, so it depending on what you are talking about, it's slightly... On this particular uh, screen that we can see here, like what is on the left side is rendered on the server, what is on the right side is rendered in the browser. Yeah, well, what parts on the right side are rendered on the uh, server? Everything what is not white is... Uh, <laughs> It's awesome to have candy in the room. <laughs> <laughs> and does, it, does it count for a presentation as well? What? The presentation. So uh, I'm not sure anymore how LibreOffice uh, is calling them. I actually just Impress. saw it. Huh? Impress. Impress. Impress, yes. Thank you. Um, is, it, is it working the same way? Yes. So the slides, <laughs> if the slides are ready. Yeah. So, so basically, when you, are, when you are creating the slides, it's the same way. So again, the documents are set up. It's you next. It's, it's you next? It is, yeah. I didn't know, sorry. Mm -hmm. I'll show you how. I'll show you something. Unless you want to show him something else. No, no. I'm okay. Cool, well done. Nice job. Thanks. Oh, it's okay. I don't need applause. No, no.